Hello, I'm Jonathan Bowman Perks, and welcome back to my favourite time of the week. And I'm really lucky to have an old friend of mine, Annette Barnes, who I was fortunate enough to work with. And Annette has had an incredible career, um, wishing to begin as a physiotherapist, but it didn't work out. We'll hear why later on. Um, but then she went into financial services, um, ended up uh, with MBNA, and then on to Lloyds Bank where she had some cracking jobs, uh, huge, uh, sizable jobs, like a COO within, uh, within the bank, and then looking after um, banks in Scotland, and then finally, um, the CEO of the Lloyds Private Bank. Now she's non-executive director to three very prestigious organizations, and Annette, lovely having you here on the series. Thank you. Um, who, who, if we were going straight into the inspirational leadership, um, who, who would you pick out as the couple of people who've been inspiring to you or, and what were their qualities that stuck out for you? You know, I think probably a couple of folks, people that are genuine, that lead with integrity and take their teams with them, I think yeah. inspire me. Yeah. Um, a couple of examples of that would be when I was very early in my career, um, I was working for a company called Northwest Securities. Yep. Um, I was in IT, I was a systems designer, and we had a particularly um, important sales activity that needed to go on. Um, and my CIO, John Callan, had been asked to go along and be part of the sales pitch. Yeah. Um, and John said, you know, no, 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 Annette will need to go, you know, Annette will be absolutely fine, she'll do a great job. Um, and just recognizing, you know, this is my boss's boss's boss at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and they asked for him probably three or four times, said, no, 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 we need you to come along to this. And he said, no, 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 Annette will do a great job. She'll be absolutely fine. Um, I went along, we did absolutely fine. We got the sales activity. Oh, yeah. And I think for me, the leadership lesson in all of that and the inspirational thing about John in that was he trusted me. Yeah. You know, he had faith and trust in me, probably more than I had in myself at the time. Yeah. Um, and that really resonated with me and that stuck with me for a long time. Very powerful. Um, I guess probably number two would be later in my career um, as a director of a European bank, I worked for a gentleman by the name of General Charles Krulak. So yeah, he was yeah. ex commandant of the Marine Corps in the US, um, was chief exec of this bank now. And, and I guess the lesson I learned from him was he walked the floor every day. You know, he went and chatted to colleagues every single day. He went and had his lunch with different colleagues every single day and just gave him a really nice sense of the culture of yeah. the organization. Yeah. You know, he really understood what made people tick and what was on their minds at that particular point in time. I, I think both those are, are really crucial qualities uh, and stand out inspiring leaders, yeah? yeah absolutely. I, I, love, I absolutely, absolutely love both those examples. And then um, you've had some incredible successes, but also uh, you're very human and like, like me, you've made your fair share of mistakes. Indeed. Um, I think I've made more than you though. Um, <laughs> but, but what would be your story and your example of when you got it wrong mm -hmm. and, and, and how that shaped you and what you learned from getting it wrong? I think as I got more senior, I realized that leadership, it's not about you anymore. It's about the team you lead and how you help and nurture them to be successful. Um, and the, the problem I had um, when I had my first director role, I remember we had a particular issue that we were all dealing with. And I thought, I honestly, genuinely thought I was doing the right thing. We were all there 10 o'clock at night fixing this problem. Um, and I thought that was the right way to help and support the team. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the team came into my office and said, you know, we don't need to catch everything because we know that you will. Wow. And I thought, wow, you know, that floored me completely. And, and I think that particular example and that particular experience made me change my leadership style quite fundamentally. Yeah. Um, one of my mentors, not long after that, actually, you know, she was a fantastic mentor and she used to talk about the three L's, listen, learn and lead. And that really resonated with me after that mm. particular, you know, example, because I thought I need to listen a lot more. I need to learn from what I'm hearing and support the team, not necessarily doing, but supporting, and then lead in a far better way. That, that is a really great story. And it, so many people in, in coaching 
do you find that the biggest issue they're getting feedback on is not micromanaging other mm, people? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Indeed, funny enough, Lee, my wife was just talking about this as CEO of her, her own charity that she mm -hmm. she's trying to do everything cheaply, and, 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 and so it ends up she does quite a lot of it herself, but yep. she's got a, a great person supporting her, but she she's now started to delegate more and, and yes. stop trying to do it all herself because uh, you've got to let people have that belief and that trust, Indeed. and then they will fl flourish. Indeed. But if you, if you are doing it all for them, they go, well, we don't need to do it. No, and, it agreed. and that'll catch it. And actually, it's very rare anybody's ever let me down, you yeah. know. So if you give them the trust and the ownership, people will fly. You know, yeah. they absolutely will. But I also remember that you used to, if people had made a mistake, you'd use it as a, a learning opportunity. Yes, absolutely. What have you learned? Yes. And, and what are you going to do to resolve it? Yeah, absolutely. Rather than you solving it, mum will sort it out. Yeah, yeah no. 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 <laughs> Otherwise, that won't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, that, that's that's great. I, I think that will stay with me for quite a long time. And then, then uh, maybe you said um, you got a couple that you liked from previous podcasters. Yes. And then we'll have your top tip at the end. What were the yeah. couple that you you liked from previous podcasters? I really liked the higher, slowly, fire fast. Yes, from uh, Alison Nimmo. Indeed, I liked the be confident. You know, one of my favourite phrases is whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. And that for me is, you know, a hugely important one, being confident um, and be resilient as yeah. well. I think with three great top tips from prior ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for me, my top tip would be stay relatable. You know, as you get more senior in the organisation, you have to remember where you came from and how it felt more importantly. Yeah. Um, and I always remember, if I can tell you a quick story, yeah, I yeah. always remember um, I was really junior, I was asked to go and drop off some paperwork where was, where in was the this executive the wing. This was MBA when MBA. it was very, very early days. Um, and I was asked to go and drop off this paperwork. So I went into the executive wing, you know, little did I know that would be one of my offices in the future, but I went in there, there were no secretaries there because it was lunchtime. And I just didn't know what to do with this paperwork. So one of the doors of one of the executive's offices was open. So I knocked very quietly on the door and said, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you, but I've got this paperwork to drop off. Where would you like me to put it? Um, and this person spun around in their chair, pointed and said, put it outside in the tray. And you know, that made me feel this big. And I thought as a leader, as I get more senior, I hope I never ever make somebody feel like that no. because it's just not the way to be. So I think you have to stay relatable, yeah. remember how it felt when you weren't a senior and make sure that that comes across to the people that you work with. Yeah, because of course the general, the Marine Corps general, he, he, he would have never have done no, that. No, no. He would have come and chat, hello, who are you? Yeah, You're absolutely. Annette, Annette, yes, hello. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I do think it, it takes so little effort, mm -hmm. but people do get too carried away with themselves. That, that's a story I won't forget. For long time. <laughs> Annette, thank you. That's You're absolutely welcome. fantastic. We're gonna have some inspiring leadership extra in a minute, okay. but I just wanna say thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and congratulations on a, a great uh, career. Uh, and also, I think the, the three organisations are going to be very lucky to have you as their non-executive director. So that's the Leeds Building Society, Building Society. Yeah. Old Mutual Wealth, Old Mutual Wealth. and Global Data, who oh. are AIM-listed PLC. Fantastic. Great roles. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much indeed.